Good morning, everybody. I'd like to call the Economic Development Commission to order. Today is Thursday, July 10th. Um, do we have uh, any comments or on the minutes from our past meeting? We have a motion for approval of the minutes. <coughs> I'll, I'll suck them. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. <laughs> it's really early. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I abstain. I wasn't here. Okay. Uh, I did. I wasn't here. Now, reports. Uh, Can I make a yes. comment or a motion? Um, I know the EDC website update is fourth on the agenda, and. Um, I was at the last Economic Development Task Force meeting, and I know the programs group and the marketing group discussed the website. I would like to make a motion to move the Economic Development Task Force report prior to the website discussion so we can get the reports on those on those items before. Okay. If Nancy's okay, she's here. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, <laughs> okay. Before we discuss the website further, so I make a motion to move that agenda item to number prior to the EDC website update. Okay, fine. All right, reports. Who would like to go first? Sarah. <coughs> Morning, everyone. Um, just a couple of things. Uh, I wanted to thank my Vice President Melissa Brett for coming last month. What we're going to try to do with Main Street is interject board members as well as myself kind of every other month so that you have somebody different reporting. Um, and also, you know, a lot of them are small business owners, so feel free to pick their brains um, as well about anything relevant um, between, you know, the small business owners and the restaurant tours on our <coughs> board. <coughs> uh, we continue marketing Sims Ray as a destination. And I'm not sure, I guess there were some questions last month. Um, Rich Korea, president of Main Street, has been uh, doing a uh, economics class with Bob Jeffers um, from the high school. Uh, this year's topic, uh, this session's topic, was uh, Andy DeFada, the Ensign Bickford Realty piece that he came in and talked to you about. Um, the students who were able to plan for what they would like to see in the mixed use component. Uh, both Rich, Andy, and I attended the final sessions, um, brought in everybody from um, town planners and <coughs> Uh, developers and, and civic uh, leaders and so uh, there were some really interesting they did four different programs four different um, models it included everything from uh, an independent movie theater to um, you know there was a lot of talk about they wanted a diner you know it was, it was just really interesting because I think that the high school kids are, are definitely an untapped market for those of you that have them or know their spending power um, and it's great to get their ideas as well as <laughs> <laughs> as consumers um, because they're the ones that you know that we're also looking to make sure that we're engaging them in the community so uh, I think that Andy DeFato was really impressed he had a board meeting within the next couple of days and so he said that he would share that with the EB board um, and you know it's a great real-world experience um, for the students and again very similar to us matching the uh, culinary arts students with the Riverview you gain they gain real-world knowledge they gain resume and portfolio building skills um, it assists some of our local businesses, makes them look at things in a different way. So it really is, I think, a very successful um, program. <coughs> um, I think, I guess Mary's going to talk a little bit more in depth about the June 19th Step Up Conference, of which Main Street was a partner. Um, but we did have over 70, actually 70 people registered before the uh, Thursday conference. Uh, we had a couple of walk-ins as well. Um, I think it was good information. You know, some of it, some of the business owners knew this was meant for existing businesses, but there was um, a, a reiterance of some of the programs that the state, you know, the state, the, especially things like the Small Business Express program, which Main Street has put uh, several of our businesses um, into the pipeline. You know, there's actual money for um, creating jobs, creating full-time jobs. There's money for uh, putting in capital, new capital into the business. Um, and you know, I thank the EDC because I, you guys kind of started that ball a couple of years ago with having Donna Wharton back come in uh, and talk about the programs. And then we reached out and, and actually had her come back in and talk to the small business owners. Uh, <clears throat> thanks to Mark Deming. I encourage you guys all to check out the Sims Ray Farmer's Market. Um, I know that 
Nancy and, and Lisa and Mary go. Uh, opening day was fantastic. I think Mark can attest. I mean, we it is a tourist draw as well as uh, an amenity for the residents. Um, it's really fantastic for the local business community as well. It is uh, really helps Simsmore Square keep a, a very low to no vacancy rate, um, which is a major property owner. When we talk about in the grand scheme of things, um, they're they're a major taxpayer and a major property owner in Simsbury. Um, it runs every Thursday. It, uh, last week we had to cancel because because of the, the weather, but it does run every Thursday, so today from 3 to 6 at Simsmore Square. Um, the Innovation Core Committee has been meeting, um, and again, uh, just for reference, that came out of the marketing study that uh, was spearheaded by the Economic Development Commission um, with a focus, or a renewed focus, I think, on innovation um, and kind of trying to harness all the innovative things that we've been doing. Uh, we met with just recently um, the private school because we have the public schools engaged, which is fantastic, but we have a wealth of resources and excitement and, and uh, knowledge with the public schools. So we uh, met yesterday? Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> uh, uh, at the invitation of the first selectman to set it up, and thanks to Lisa, she was the, uh, she's our education liaison. Um, and we talked with Westminster. We'll be talking with Ethel Walker, who uh, couldn't make it. I think Bessie was on vacation. Uh, but really trying to engage the Westminster campus. They have some really amazing things going on. They've turned the downstairs part of their chapel into an arts gallery uh, for students. We talked about them participating in the Sindri free, free Bike Program because you know their biggest complaint is um, walking to Fitzgerald's and they spend money here, you know. Um, and we talked uh, about doing a brochure. Uh, that we could, that the Innovation Committee could hand out to prospective people that are interested in becoming engaged and involved, explaining what we're doing and where we're <coughs> going. Um, and so I think that was all really, really positive. <coughs> um, and talked about things like internships, potentially work, work internships, um, mentoring, you know, all of these different programs. Again, trying to really engage the youth and match them with the business community. Um, which I think is fantastic. Um, I'm working with the veterans groups, uh, the Veterans Memorial, which was recently passed uh, by zoning in April, end of April, um, and it's uh, the American Legion and the uh, Veterans of Foreign Wars um, to do their help them with their fundraising. I can't directly solicit because I'm the executive director of a not-for-profit, but I am helping them with publicity. This is something that will be uh, a quiet place of reflection, but it'll be uh, right on Hot Meadow Street. It's going to be just south of the public library. Uh, they're really fantastic groups. Um, the, the concept has been uh, worked out over and over again, more than 16 different designs uh, by Terri Ann Hahn, who's a local landscape architect designer in Simsbury. Um, she's donated more than $20,000 of in-kind design services, um, and they're in the fundraising stage currently um, to make this, you, you know, to make this a reality. And then finally, um, Taste in Simsbury, our sixth annual Taste in Simsbury will be happening on August 28th at the Riverview. It is, every year it is sold out. Uh, it is presented again, our presenting sponsors, the Simsbury Bank. Um, we have corporate sponsors. Um, and so uh, we'll be getting out a press release. Tickets should be available shortly, both online, again, um, as we did last year, was hugely successful. Not only do we get a huge number of Simsbury residents, but we, and I think Dominique Avery can attest from tourism, you know, she went around polling people because I said, we get people from out of state, we get people from all over. Um, and, and she came back and said, you know, you weren't lying. I we talked to people from all over the state of Connecticut. Um, and then finally, something of interest, I'm not sure if the commission is aware, but um, the state of Connecticut just released the data.ct.gov website, which is the open data website. Um, there's a lot of very good information. I still have to sift through a lot of this. I just started last night. Um, but. Uh, what, what the intent is, is to provide a ton of raw data to the business resident community. Uh, it'll include, it, it should, or I've been told it includes everything from um, school information to property taxes by town, you name it. And so um, I think that it's something worth looking at because I, I believe that there will be pieces of data in there that we can use to inform ourselves on um, economic development in Simsbury. What was the website again? It's data.ct.gov. Thank you. And I don't know if Hiram, you know, but um, it, it's newly up and running from the state of Connecticut and huge, <coughs> huge amounts of information currently. And they're just made a decision, I think, to add even more information. We're 
Can you buy tickets to the Taste of Sims? Um, you'll be able to purchase them at all the Simsbury Bank locations. <coughs> you'll be able to purchase them at the local uh, businesses like Horns, uh, Flowers and Gifts, Weldon Hardware, the Simsbury Inn, um, and then we have them online. I, it's like shopsimsbury.com uh, backslash taste, and I'll send that out, but it'll be available online as well. Okay. Any questions? Comments, questions? Okay, thank you very much. Farmington Valley Visitors Association. Thank you, Sarah. Morning, everyone. Summer is always a really interesting time for us. It's fall planning, and it's also the 2015 guide and membership. So in my sparest of time, that's the first priority. But in the meanwhile, we have been helping the antique car show get enough brochures for their goodie bags so that the car drivers need two hands to carry it. And that seems to be fairly successful. I actually will be out there. It's, I think it's the 13th. And they're really, really excited over that. I'm also helping with that kind of information for the, um, the Dream Ride, which is in August. And from there, it's planning for fall and next year. We, the, our little historic sites group has decided officially that we will be doing a tavern bus tour. Next April, we are beginning it, and we will we will be ending up at a place where one could taste old-fashioned adult beverage. And Phelps Tavern will be involved in it as it was a working tavern. We're also putting together now the information to do a tavern brochure. When we did our one-room schoolhouse, we had that brochure out, and we've decided how interesting would it be to at least find out where taverns were in valley towns. As we discussed yesterday, there are at least 10 to 15 taverns, but we would be just picking two and then giving people information on where to go if they want to see where other ones were. I believe I work in one. Yeah. My office is an old one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, mus music and dance of the era will be at Phelps for the first stop on the tour. And we're going to do open hearth cooking in Burlington, and then we're going to end up in Bark Hampstead for the history of drinking alcohol and a taste. So that just gives you a little taste. And as, as we get closer, you'll get the information. <laughs> um, our fall lecture series for the historic sites is, is going to be centered around cemeteries, not necessarily visits, but the history of headstones, or gravestones, or whichever you would like to call, and why things are put in what positions and what positions in the cemetery are, are most appropriate for gravestones. <coughs> and it's very interesting that some of it has to do with the sun. So if it's faced in uh, the sun, they will fade. But some of the um, felons of the valley, gravestones were faced opposite the sun so that they remained while everyone else faded. But interesting things this, this little group brings up. And we're also working on Haunted Miniature <coughs> Golf. It's time to start getting that moving. And that's it. Sounds Questions. like a full calendar. Oh, it, I thought it was supposed to slow down at some point. I guess I was mistaken. <laughs> Comments? Questions? Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, Nancy, we'll put you up uh, next on uh, the agenda. Can I ask just one question? Sure. Nancy? Nancy. I'm sorry. How's the tourist season going? Do you have a feel for it? In it's the, actually up. How do you get numbers on that? Or, I mean, is it just false feel? Or? Um, our web hits are up. My phone calls are up. And requests for guys are up. And I, I have not been in my office as much as usual. Um, but there are more people coming in more residents coming in asking for information for family and friends that are coming in so there are more people coming through thank you yeah sorry Good morning. Good morning um so the task force met on june 17th and we had our first full-fledged breakout of our three working groups. And um, actually, later on today, an email is going to be going out to the task force and to you folks. You'll get a copy of the recaps um, that each of the chairs of the various um, 
working groups put together, um, as well as some attachments to materials that um, groups are going to be looking at moving forward for next steps. So, um, what, are, what are the three working groups? The three working groups are process, programs, and marketing. Okay, so um, I just thought I'd review those recaps, and if you guys have any questions, we can do that. And um, I'm kind of going to do it in order where I lead to uh, the website discussion, um, so that uh, it flows nicely into that next agenda item. But um, so the chair of the process group is Wayne Copley, and uh, they got together and reviewed the 2000, 2009 guide for processing land use development applications and discussed flowchart for applications with and without design review committee and with and without wetlands applications, discussed town issues, um, issuing a summary of volunteer commission expectations for performances, encouraging training on regulations, guidance of documents, needless to say a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> so it's a short recap, but there's a lot of information in it. And basically what Hiram is gonna do in preparation for their next meeting is um, they came to the, um, preliminary with some preliminary recommendations so that group is going to uh, review some of those and then um, over the next course of a couple meetings act on that so they can bring it to the task force and um, as far as processes go to um, bring forward recommendations the working groups are working on it they'll bring it to the task <coughs> force we'll come to you guys keeping you up to date all along but asking for your support and then forwarding it on to land use boards and the board of selectmen so um so that's as i said why we'll keep you copied on all the emails and you can read all the materials as the group does and as the group uh, moves forward with those so um they are um task next I think Hiram's going to provide them with some retention plan um, economic development retention plan information and they're going to really start to do some homework to research uh, some of that as well so um, that's the focus of the process group um, the programs committee um, Lisa can attest that was a lively <laughs> discussion it's um, uh, it, yeah and Chris was there too so um, so we, we actually started out the meeting, Lisa had some handouts from um, some tax abatement stuff. They're gonna be talking about that at the next meeting. Um, but we wanted to get them focused on looking at the outline for the website. So um, we moved to that and the initial discussion with the group actually was around why are we doing an economic development website if we have a town website and they went, um, through the outline uh, that Chris had um, put together and, and Carolyn and uh, removed actually a lot of the stuff that present, pr pertain to residential. And as we went through things like discussing schools and, and things like that, um, the discussion was again back to why are we gonna move towards an economic development website if the town has some of those things. So we tried to refocus because our charge was to look at the outline and so we did do that and I have copies that will be part of the attachment to um, the email that goes out today. Um, but needless to say, things like tourism and residents that went under lifestyle advantages, I think is what we ended up calling it. Um, so it's a, a good organization of the information. And <clears throat> as I said, some of the, that discussion was around sort of how it's organized and where it is depends on, on, on you know, the economic development website versus what the town has. Um, and so the attachments to the email you'll get today will include a lot of tax abatement information. Um, Hiram, we passed some of that out to the group and um, we'll be, be providing more. Hiram's gonna lead the discussion for that group next and they'll be looking at evaluating um, tax abatement. And there's really, and I apologize, I can't hand it out, but again, it'll be part of the attachment, but you can tell my printer kind of started to fade as I went through. Um, the Worcester Business Journal put out an article in June and it, it was titled, um, There's More to Business Growth Than Tax Breaks. And um, basically it said that, um, and this was out of the Dukakis, oh, where is it? <coughs> uh, Dukakis Center for Urban and Regional Policy at Northeastern University. And it went into um, discussing uh, the four factors that um, influence businesses. Um, or developers to decide where to uh, to go forward with commercial expansion projects. And they were economic development, marketing, timeliness of approvals, parking, and public transit. So it, it is 
I think it's going to incite some good um, discussion around the idea of um, the types of tax abatements or we used to have an infrastructure program. We haven't had that for, I don't know, four years or so or more now, six years. Um, but that group's really going to look at those and um, Lisa provided something that has a list of some of the state's programs. Not all of those are available to the town. Hiram's going to review that with the group and, and uh, so that's, that'll be the focus of their, their discussion next. Um, so then the marketing group. So interestingly enough, when we got back together at the end, where the program group started talking about the website and, as I said, was discussing the need for a separate website or not, that was um, some of the discussion that the marketing group had. So. Um, they started out, and I should just back up for a minute and say, they started out their meeting talking about the core idea that we had put forward and built consensus on through the full group before we broke out. So they said that they agree in general to um, the, core, the core idea um, that was put together. And just as a reminder, Simsbury is a high value community. Quality of life is a chief attraction for people looking to move to Simsbury and a key reason current citizens stay, as well as our strongest asset for retaining and attracting business. Um, and uh, Jeff Dornenberg is the chair of this group and his summary went on to say that um, brand represents a customer's experience um, and it's uh, should represent what makes our town product or organization special. Simsbury is a great place to live. And he said, we must concentrate on telling our unique story, not a watered down message. We believe we'll have, um, we, uh, we believe we'll have a broader appeal. And um, the discussion around the website, basically the summary of comment was economic development should not be a separate effort. So um, that was, the report out of uh, that group and they'll go back to really um, honing in on the core idea um, and um, start to discuss an overall marketing strategy uh, to include things like the website but other aspects of a, a more cohesive marketing campaign because ultimately <coughs> that recommendation will come out and it will have some budget and some numbers built around that um, and some timing and some you know some launch ideas as well so um, so that is, in a nutshell, the, um, the report from the marketing, uh, from the task force, rather. And, um, you know, so I can answer any questions you have or hang for your website discussion and participate in that as well. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, we do. Um, we were going two weeks at a time, and then we've broken into these groups, and as I said, we'll be assigning homework for folks, so we're going to one-month meetings. Our next meeting is July 22nd, and then we're into the third week in August, third week in September, third Tuesday. Um, and then actually when I put out the email today, I'm going to suggest some October, November, and December dates so we can set ourselves up with dates through the end of the year. Um, and as I said, ultimately our goal is in the fall to, um, you know, work through that time to get recommendations. Um, as I said, keep you folks up to speed, get your support on those things, and bring them forward to the various boards and the Board of Selectmen. And how, how much longer do you think you'll continue to meet to, how much more time do you think you need to complete? the agenda or is that open-ended or no we're in a two-year window that was the intention and the onset of it and um, what we're looking to do is to bring some recommendations as I said to um, groups in the fall and um, so with that and and the feedback we get along the way and the feedback we get from um, <coughs> some of those uh, initial recommendations in their final form I should say their uh, their uh, first presentation form um, will help us set the tone for what we do from there. But, but ultimately, it, it was to complete our work within that two-year window. So. Comments, questions? OK, thank you very okay. much. Thanks. Now we can go into the EDC website <coughs> update. So would you like to um, take that on? Sure. The, um, we met with Rick Bazzano two weeks ago? Yeah. Um, and had a conference call with Virtual Town Hall um, regarding the three options that were presented to Carolyn in a phone call mm -hmm. about a month ago. Mm -hmm. um, 
And interestingly enough, because Carolyn was part of the marketing is part of the marketing group from the task force, it was brought up um, in our meeting with Virtual Town Hall. The question again about why are we doing a separate EDC website versus revamping the town website and making the town website work the way we envision it to work in terms of marketing Simsbury. So, um, do you want to talk about the options first, and then we can talk? Yeah, just do the three options. Sure. Let me pull out. Just what we two. discussed is with Rick there. Yes. Um, because you understand some of that far better than I. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just grab that. But I, you know, while you're looking for that, I think okay. that um, it, I found it interesting that the marketing group and the process group um, both came to the same conclusion independent of one another um, in the task force meeting that why are we doing a separate EDC website when the town web we're going to have two different messages we're mm -hmm. going to have a town message and we're going to have an EDC message and this whole website discussion started two years ago mm -hmm. because the town website um, be careful uh, wasn't functioning the way we <laughs> wanted it to function to market the town are you saying user friendly user friendly yeah. okay <laughs> Trying to be nice. Um, Rick Pisano did um, agree that the website was done three years ago, um, and that, or maybe more. Um, and um, he, I, I, I think he, they just picked a template. There was right. um, no uh, real driven reason to go with what they went. They just picked a template, and they, you know, that's my understanding. So do you, do you want me right. to read through? Go ahead. Okay. So um, the first option was an existing proposal prior to um, my joining the EDC that uh, they were just going to um, use the town website and, and create a, a special banner for EDC and, and try to uh, inject some pictures. And, uh, but we have to use the town colors their menu system the way it's set up now the framework the back end is all the same so there's a very little customization uh to option one and that option cost um 4.95 a one-time cost no additional annual costs um, option two is a new website separate from the town that is fully customizable um uh, full you know whatever we design uh, uh, virtual town hall would program and edit as we uh, intend the site to look. So we would be the driver of, of what that is. There's no template to look at. There's no plug and play. We design the template custom, never been done before, never been seen. So, um, and I, I donated my services to, to do that option too if we wanted to go that route that I would work with all the committees, the task force being on the marketing group there and um, having a lot of input and a lot of creative people involved there uh, to uh, the messaging, the branding, all that. We work as a, a, a group and, and this task force too. Um, so that cost <coughs> is $1,895, a one-time cost, and $995, an annual hosting service cost. Um, and that would have a, a custom URL as well. So also, in addition to that, there is a cost for the the purchasing of the URL, right? Um, Which is so two ninety five. Whatever that URL, you know, economic Simsbury economic whatever. Um, it would be a separate URL, and not not sim, you know the town URL. Um, now, and then I'll I'll go back once I'm, I'm done addressing the three options, sort of the pros and cons initially of each option. Uh, the hybrid of option one and two. Uh, that's our third option, and what uh, that would mean is that a custom homepage for EDC website, a separate EDC, EDC website homepage, but then when you click through off the homepage, you go, it directs you to the town website for further content. So it's really um, like a a drop cloth <laughs> and, uh, and it doesn't give us a full custom customization but um, that is 
sort of giving us that that uh, sex appeal for that home page, but then uh, it would go, it would be confusing when people click off the home page and then they go to the town website, they lo lose the consistency and continuity. Uh, and that cost was $9.95, one time cost, no additional annual costs. It would be a custom URL, but then once you click right off the home page to go to uh, any of the content, you you go to the town URL. So you'd have issues with. You would never go back. Would well, go back. right. You'd have to have navigation on the town website to try to get you back, a little more visible. Um, so we option three. This is our take on the mark. The marketing committee was the uh, option three was a band aid fix, and we we didn't think that that would be it would be more confusing and almost. Um, uh, you know, detriment to our, our cause. <laughs> and then option two, um, you know, that was the most supported idea, but by far everybody just wants to see a new town website with a, with a focus on business, uh, a more strong. Um, Cupertino is a great example of a website that's uh, Apple's headquarters and is in Cupertino. And when we talked about, you know, being high tech and everything, I checked out Cupertino's website. And they do a great job of balancing the um, business aspect of their website and also uh, the tourism and community. Uh, it's all blended together because what they're selling is the one brand. Uh, and, and then option one was uh, the least, well, the, the least favorite because it really, the, the town website, we didn't like the town website. So we thought that <laughs> uh, that would not give the image that we wanted to project. So that was kind of off the table. Did, when you guys met with Rick, did you discuss at all the costs associated with what it would take to do a new town website? We didn't want to go there. <laughs> Although, the discussion said that if EDC goes for option two and brings a whole new look and robustness and user friendliness, that may perhaps drive the town to revisit the functionality and user friendliness of the current town website. <clears throat> um, and, and I should read this was the, I didn't read the bottom of what the marketing group said, but uh, for us as professional marketers, this is just common sense. We recognize that it is daunting, confusing, and threatening to many people who will need to embrace the idea. Um, so they do recognize that it would be um, a daunting task. However, without, I think, just getting that information and knowing what it would be all about um, and I guess the analogy for me is in my day job we do we work with branding guidelines and we do that because you don't want to dilute your brand and when we put together campaigns we launch them um, in their in their whole in their wholeness in their completeness and so if we do a website, we want to be able to really celebrate that. And and if we dilute the brand and sort of dual brand ourselves with these two sites, I think that's what the marketing group is coming away with to say that it's, um, and that's what sort of led to, I think, some of the confusion around the content discussion. As we got to each item, it said, but that's already on the town website. So if it was one site, then it would have the schools, it would have the tourism, it would have the other, all of the content. Um, well, we, uh, let me, I just, we've, we've started this back in December. We have looked, our little group has looked at several different EDC websites across the country, and they're much better looking, they're much better functionality, they give you a lot of information. And we don't think if we do the EDC website over, we don't think you have to go to only one place for information. A lot of it is links. So if, you, if you're on EDC and you're looking at something from a business perspective and you want to quickly go look at schools, there'll be a link to go to schools. So you could go to the town website and go look at schools, but you could also get these links off. So we think you can access information from various parts. We just want to say from a digital point of view, that the, the EDC website allows you to see what you want to see as a business person or as a visitor, will take you to tourism, or as somebody else. And we're not saying that you can't, that information can't be somewhere else. But 
I think we can't wait for the town to think over the next year or two or three whether they want to redo their website. We have to move ahead on this. What was the reason for like we didn't want to go there? Was like too much money, or that was it we already know what the answer is, or it's it's money, time, you know. I, um, I did ask Rick, um, you know, specific questions of uh, we locked it, uh, what his contract with Virtual Town Hall was, and you know, and he was on the phone, the gentleman from Virtual Town Hall. He says it's an annual contract, could change at any time. If we want a new website design, we could we could do that, no problem. <laughs> he he said he's excited and he's open to you know see what the EDC wants to do because he's he would like to integrate whatever we decide is the right direction branding wise into the town website. So I think you know it's just the budget and you know the timing, but I think I don't see any um, pushback on why we couldn't have those discussions of I having he, one unified. I, I think he was very supportive. <laughs> I think he agreed that it year, was so. time to revisit the, yeah. the template. I, know, I think the, the, the town can do that, and I think uh, right. they want. But once again, EDC would like to focus on our website and what the town wants to do at some point down the road. That that's fine. It's it's open ended. But we would like to move ahead on this issue, and Carolyn said that you would be willing to do sort of a mock-up. Right. If that's if, if we, yeah, because we all voted for option two. It's more money, but it gives us the flexibility to create a website that has the functionality and includes a lot of the stuff that we've seen here in in the outline that you did. And Carolyn is willing to do a mock-up to sort of say what would that look like. I think though we do have to wait for marketing the marketing portion of the task like we need the message we can't create the message of what whatever the message for economic development comes out of the task force marketing it's a long word um out of their marketing group that message has to be the same message that we have on the edc web i mean th that's who we are mm -hmm. so we can't we can't go create this next month because they don't have the message yet. Because the marketing has to be cohesive. Yeah, and sorry. that's what's so, Mark, to the linking part you're talking about. I think everybody realizes that the resources are there, whether they're from the town or we connect to CERC or we do all that other stuff. But I think where marketing was going was, um, and even the, the concept of the core idea and the marketing study, which was to you know, create this this statement, this tagline, this identity for the town and have it be celebrated by the town itself. So it's not that it's not an economic development effort and initiative, but it is, um, oh gosh, I keep quoting some yeah, things. That, that's not our, a big issue. We can certainly in, integrate. What we're trying to do is to basically get the, 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 the structure of this <coughs> together and the functionality. And we want you want to change the market. That's fine. We could, we can do that as we we go ahead. But we can't get bogged down to the point where if we don't have the right message, we can't move ahead with the website. So right. That, that's the we can study my, this my to death. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, I mean, you can't put the cart before the horse. Okay, if I'm going to do this template, I would want to know clear vision and statement because that's how you develop content. So the photography, the words, uh, that is what the site is going to be. It's not the structure necessarily. It's the, the nav bar and all those back end. What what I see is that I think we have to kind of explore. Uh, or be wait, uh, see what the time frame of when is this messaging going to be ready, and when can we look at a prototype based on that messaging? I, I'd love to be able to have that messaging uh, develop because if we don't have it right and we present, uh, it's you know. Well, what about the mes the messaging that we did with the whole brochure we did uh, two or three years ago? Mm. We don't we like had, that messaging. You don't like that message anymore. <laughs> no, it's so not. No. Yeah. Yeah. So part of well, <coughs> you, well the I, I just want to be careful. Yeah, I mean, we did a ton of focus group. We did a, we have a ton of buy-in, but just a reminder that that was the heritage uh, tourism piece, mm -hmm. and um, I think the group felt, you know, in, in the greater committee, all this, all the assets we were talking about were still embodied in all of those quality of life, but they wanted to take more of a business-centric spin on something we've already done. So we wouldn't. We wouldn't detract from what we're already doing. The Heritage Charm and Adventure, great things happen here, but it would be it becomes the jumping point to to change it to make it a little more business centric. 
can I um I would like if we could get Rick and maybe Hiram to get together to discuss some costs. Um, I don't know what, I mean, we know and we, what we approved budget wise for the Board of Selectmen for you guys. Um, part of the funding for the marketing study was building a marketing strategy and a plan. Um, and so when I mentioned one to two years to get together, I mean, we're already six months into it. I'm not saying we have to wait for two years to launch all of this. The marketing group is already looking to, in their next steps, um, uh, next steps is to think uh, through and model a presentation that we can carry forward and gain consensus. So they, they're chomping at the bit. You have a group of media buyers and, and graphic designers and, and uh, marketing folks that are there with that sole focus to look at all that. So I don't think it's going to slow things down. It's just we're bringing all these groups together to work in tandem. And if we can understand budget and timing, we might be able to accomplish what I think was going to be a much greater return on our investment. And when we talk about just doing something separately and instead of as a collective whole piece of it, it's not going to have as great of an impact. I wouldn't go out and um, sort of market my marketing and launch my campaign if it was not fully what I wanted it to be. So what um, would our time frame be? Well, I think we can find out more. If we can find out from Rick, we can talk about budget. And then, I mean, one of the reasons why I, we, we diverted the focus with these pro, the programs and the marketing group to talk about the website right away was because we knew you guys were working on it and we didn't want to hold things up. Um, we wanted to, you know, provide that input. Jesse, uh, this is like a course in Greek to me, okay? So <laughs> let, me, let me preface it with that position. But, you know, I'm very interested in comparing these two, appro I guess it's two, maybe three approaches with, with let's say, a what I would say would be a successful uh, system that perhaps Windsor or Marlboro or some of these, these towns that have very successful uh, programs going and how they do it. Yeah, <clears throat> and I, I kind of go along with that. The message should be the same, so that core idea. But that core idea doesn't have to wait for budgets and all of that. Once you have a core idea of what the town wants to market and what they want to say, we can add that into our portion of the website because I would whatever we EDC does as a website is going to be linked to and added to the overall website, I would imagine. I mean, yes, yes and no, and I think it depends on, like, as you talk about Cupertino, when you land there, it is that the town is embracing economic development, and it, you, you live it and breathe it but and sort it, of feel it right But for us, there. it's, it, it, from, a, from a developer's standpoint, the look and feel is all good. They're past that. They're past marketing when they're on the website looking at a specific site and what's around it and what the infrastructure is. They're past the web. They're yeah. past the marketing and the field. Right. And, and I think that's our, well, just yeah. finish. I think our task is to build the components that a developer, a <coughs> commercial broker need to go to the next step right. before they get to hire. Yeah. No, that, I, that's I what I think. Disagree. So we could work on that now and, we and not, not put it together until there's a uh, an idea, but I would think that what, option two would still be a town website with a link EDC that goes to this area. No, option two is just an EDC website. So I would think you. No, but that's I, I, linked from the town website. Yeah, there's it can a, be linked. Oh, yeah, no. From, he, I would think from you'd the want town that. EDC. I think you want to go to Simsbury. <laughs> yes. No. You EDC. Can, Boom, now I'm into yeah. the nuts yeah. and bolts yes. and what I need. I don't want the look, feel good brochures and things. I think there's two things. I'm as passionate as I am about this website. I think we need to get going. We do need to get going on it because we're behind um, in promoting the great work that's been done to get businesses to come here. Okay, we can't wait for the town to decide to revamp their entire town website to what we would like to see, because that could be years from now. We do need to wait for the message. Yes. Okay, so I think that we probably need to decide what option do we like, because we need to find the additional funding for potentially 
which option we choose. And while we're developing that, we're waiting for the message. But I personally don't think we should wait for the town to get on board with revamping their website to suit our needs as a commission. Does that make yes. sense? Yeah, that, that's what I was saying. That, <laughs> yeah, how do you... I would still say I think it's worthwhile while you're working on this, and because at this point, at least and I are saying, you have $1,000 approved in your budget to the website. You take two ninety five to buy your URL, and you have you know, $700, and you're trying to figure out how to put together basically a $3,000 plan. And if it's, and I don't know, but if it's five or $10,000, and it's a new website, and the entire thing, instead of going to the website, for EDC, even if it's not just the landing page that takes you, you're going to bounce by link to differently formatted, visual, <clears throat> non-cohesively messaged information, and it's it's going to be organized not ultimately in the best way um, because you'll have all of those resources here, and you'll have them duplicated over here, even if it's through links. But again, you're you're bouncing back and forth. You may have. <clears throat> five to ten pages that will have the new look and then you're going to be bouncing back to an old page here and an old page there it's not it really I mean I, I, I wouldn't be saying this if I really truly didn't believe it with all of the, the discussions that we've had thus far and I think where we could be if we just have Rick look into cost and time frame we knowing that can discuss with the Board of Selectmen that here's option A here's option B and and we can still continue the marketing groups work to create the messaging um, and you know get into templating some things um, you're gonna have to do maybe two or three pages to start to tweak before you ever get to the the remainder of the content so, so that in of itself will take some time so our EDC website is probably three to ten five years behind the times what is your time frame to uh, your bottom line says we can sort of do this but we can't put an EDC website together until the bigger t discussion takes place about the town website. I, I guess my question continues to be, who, because I don't understand this and forgive me, <laughs> You're on mic, who makes the decision about the look and the feel of the town website to begin with? Like who, who chooses the template? Who chooses the colors? The town staff did that, worked with Mary. Town staff got together and worked on that. Uh, the, well, can I just make one point? I mean, these are wonderful discussions, and wherever we end up is great. But just in terms of budget, the Board of Selectmen sets the town budget, and if you're adding an operating cost, we do have to approve that. That's not something an individual board can add to the town budget without going through the budgeting process. So that's another step in the process. Well, not, yes and no, because the task force has $32,000, and that money's there, and, and part of the discussion, and actually I have a kind of a follow-up separate question to Sarah's comment about a brochure, we're talking about <coughs> cohesiveness here, um, is that we had the tour tourism was going to do a video, and we, during the budget discussion we said, well, you know what, let's bank that money all into here, because when we talk about marketing the town, and if it's a video or a website or... You know, all, when you, at every sort of component that you'd launch that information with, you know, there's it should be done collectively together. So there's thirty-two thousand dollars, but not, but not for Can the we? next ten years. So if we're going to add a line item that's a budgeting item that requires an addition that the town spend a thousand dollars every a year, year, that has to be approved by the board of select. Well, yes, yes, but I mean, in other words, if if the recommendation out of the marketing study is short term, long term. And then we have this amount of money because their option that they the option you want to vote on has a thousand dollars in it to well you can launch ongoing. it but there is no money right now authorized to for sustain ongoing. it over ten years to host it years. to host it to host it and host and service and that's right. a budget item and so that's the purview of the board of selectmen but we would certainly take your recommendation seriously if if that's the thing you made it but just in terms of process that's a decision for the board of selectmen to make it, what operating didn't we already advance uh, a request for website yeah, there's uh, updates eight. and approvals and monies. Didn't we already do that with the budget? Wasn't eight thousand dollars added to the to the IT budget for sustaining the current website? No, yes. it was reduced to a thousand dollars, and seven thousand was transferred to the communications, communications person for updating 
um, and doing some things like that. So that's so not a bad that thing. The seven, you get seven years. Or you get seven thousand. Well, at the existing sites. But yeah. that's towards a salary for Bill, all that the goes back to the point then. Yeah. Of the existing <coughs> So it, 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 I, I agree with Mark in one respect is we are behind the times with our website when a we developer or broke. But well, if we all agree, then why isn't something being done on it? it we're talking about it. We've been talking about it since December. And it's not as much as the look and feel is important and it's an important message to have uh, it's important to have one message i get all that but what my whole point on the website has nothing to do with the look and feel i don't care what it looks like when i go i don't care i want to find the gis system i want to find that property and whether it's permitted for a particular use that's all I want to find. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care. I want the fewest buttons to get the most information before I have to walk into someone like Hiram's office. That's what I want. I don't care what it looks like. I, I just want it to be very user friendly. Get to the bottom line information for my purpose. For for and that's and that's what I, there there is a whole other component. There's tourism. There's schools. There's all of that. But for our purpose here, it's really one item and. I'd like it all to be together. I'd like to do one site and have this link and have our little piece. That would be great. But if we're hearing, well, it's got to go through this and it's got to do this and we got to go here, we got to go there, it, 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 then we're going to be talking about. I will guarantee. I'll tell you right now, we'll be here in December talking about the same things. And in, in fact, option two right now is what Lisa and I are talking about. And that's. I guess that's why I'm saying we, we can move forward with doing the the messaging and the content and everything to get it started have the discussion with rick ultimately we still need to go back to the board of selectmen and or through the task force money but with knowledge of options as to hey if we spend a thousand dollars a year for maintenance how much do we currently spend actually right now to do the whole town website and mm -hmm. so so do you, I, I just think since you know you have that cost and it's not approved yet couldn't we just take the time to figure that out well, while we're doing these other things? Right. Is there anyone in this room right now that believes that the present town website is proper and appropriate and we don't have to change it? Does anyone believe that? Then why at the next Board of Selectmen meeting isn't it changed? <laughs> well, 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 if it's so obvious, and here's the next obvious question. At the next Board of Selectmen meeting, why isn't it put on the agenda, voted on, and approved with a directive to EDC to do their website and the task force to get the message by September or October then you're on your way. Why, question, why, are we, why are we waiting? Why is that so hard? My question as the board, the board select member would be, I'd like to hear from Rick Pisano as to what our cost would be because the professional marketing Well, it's not a cost issue anything. at that point. It's it, not it a cost issue. It's, no, no. The first step is the directive that we are going to do it. Now we're going to figure I, out a way how to do it. Because what you're saying is, well, if it costs... 5,000 more than we want, this huge budget that we have, we're going to keep the one that everybody in this room agrees isn't appropriate. No. Well, no, then, you gotta, then you say, no. we are doing it. Rick Bazzano, we are going to do it. Find a way to do it. We'll find the money to do it, and we'll find a way to get it done very soon. So my, That's what I'd rather hear. My takeaway and we'll do our part. We'll do our part on the EDC side. Option one and option three, out. Option two, and Rick Bazzano's information we're missing. So it isn't that we're not going to do anything about it. The question to me is, if I had something in front of me, I would want to look at those two options and then to decide, is economic development a priority for the town? If it is, we're doing one of these two. Which one really is the most sustainable, long-term, best thing for us so that we aren't just catching up to doing what everybody else is doing right now? We're actually forward thinking and moving, moving ahead. Because ultimately, we know the best option here, and that's what these guys are saying, is we need a new website for the town. So I don't disagree with you, and I don't see this a wait. I see this as get us that little bit of more information and, and get it on our agenda. How long would it take Rick Pisano to put together a proposal to, with, with two estimates to do a website? Okay, so would that take two weeks? No. Hiram, would that take two weeks for someone no, to do? So, no. So I just would say, could Hiram and Rick get together Hiram's the keeper of the economic development part of the budget, and if he and Rick can get together and discuss those options, you've given him the part that you already know, and you guys can have that before you. You can have some discussion around that. The task force will talk about it. We could meet collectively and talk about it. Can <coughs> EDC get on this board board of selectmen's agenda to discuss the website? Anytime. Yeah. yeah. You make a submission but, to. There's a form that you fill oh out. 
online and you get it to the first selectman's office. It's generally required seven days in advance, but at okay. any time. So Chuck, Chuck has a question. A question. So the question in, I get what you're saying about the so utility. The in any of the in, in the EBC website, the thousand dollars. None of that stuff was getting added, though, right? I mean, none of those basic, none, none of those capabilities. We, Some we're, were, but not the major ones. You're right. So, I mean, it really, we weren't really, even in this scenario of $1,000 that we're talking about, and it was mostly just links, it wasn't really adding any of the capability that you're asking no, for. Well, no, because GIS is off But it's not really right doing now. that. Yeah, Rick, Rick uh, Zawitzki came in uh, a couple months ago and talked about what, that plan was or for the GIS for GIS and yeah. things, and that's my, my, that would be the, that, now, that is definitely my, not my fear because that's expensive. What? My point is, my, my fear is, wait, wait, what's you're that? You're joking, <laughs> really? What GIS 90 days? Yeah, that's I thought he mentioned that they were kind of on their way with having the capabilities so, okay. of doing okay. it, and it was some money then. Okay. So, my point is, it, it's exciting, yeah. right? I don't know that. That any of this effort that we've been talking really gets you what you're asking for, right? Not it's, all of it. I mean, I agree. It, I mean, the, the separate ED website is really all about some kind of different look and feel with some added links that aren't on the town's website. So it really no, but more inf a lot more information and and, and usability. And yeah. Well, no, oh, yeah. more information via links. In more user right, friendly. It's, more it's not adding any capability though, is it? You need capability. No, the the, the capability, <laughs> the main capability is GIS. That's a, a different it's animal coming. with different monies involved. And whenever that's ready. It gets added into whatever right. site we have. Right. Right. Okay. That what that's changing different. is the but functionality. Yeah. Of, of how a user uses right. the information and how it's organized. Okay. <coughs> but, but. But I agree with you. The some of that main capability is is irrelevant to both discussions. <laughs> the, the, that's a whole separate amount of money. I have to leave. And and yeah. uh, done differently. So yes. I, I agree with you there. Yes. I yeah, I just feel yeah. this isn't getting you what you want. You know what I mean? No, no. Well, it, it, it when the stops. town gets the capability, it's going to be linked off the town's website, yeah, and then it'll be there, right? Right, right. But if you want it in a fashion where you go to one spot and you sure. have everything right. that you need to get your decisions uh, made, that's all. And that would be one component of it. Right. Okay. So, so it can I just ask that we're get this information, and if he and Hiram work together, <coughs> and that if you guys that we want to come before the Board of Select in the meantime, the marketing group's meeting on the 22nd, they'll keep pushing forward. They're working on the core idea and the messaging and the overall marketing plan, too. And that, too, will give us some sense of cost and stuff. That's well, And that's not a one-time hit, either. So that's... Well, Rick so Pisano is meant to get back to me following our meeting and op looking at option two and talking with Virtual Town as to what the co bundled cost would be right. for us to proceed. Perfect. I have not gotten that yet. So, uh, as I said, right now we can give you the 1900 plus, uh, you know, 1000 bucks a year. That's the overall plus by our own URL. <coughs> so when I get that, that will be, you know, further information for discussion. It might be worthwhile if you're having Rick do this to also do maybe a bundled cost outside of virtual town hall for you guys to compare. <laughs> because there, if, there's, if it's, there's a way to do it less expensively. Or you mean less go to a different vendor? I mean, <clears throat> virtual town hall is one template, but there's, I, I think in the marketing group, the research they've done, not, you know, it used to be everybody used virtual town hall. It's, it was one of your only options. And now, because of the website pro proliferation, there's, there's, there are other choices as well if you want to do a kind of different standalone site. So it might be worthwhile to compare to see if the cost is cheaper to bring in a, somebody new. Well. Uh, we we were trying to um, w the design would be totally new and fresh something virtual town hall has not designed yet they it's not a template that's in their toolbox so they uh, they agreed that they would program and uh, make uh, live whatever we say and what we show them I would be giving them uh, design files to work from exactly. but I'm just saying if you're already providing and doing the brunt of the work yeah Ireland, and that it's you know, the, the added cost may be because you're not using a template of theirs. Mm -hmm. I, you know, we don't Yeah, we could be fresh with somebody else. Hosting fee the only concern, the, work. the only concern we had is um, the maintaining the, the, um, 
the training, the, the change, because we see that as a loophole of, of the staff is used to working in that environment with those tools. We'd have to retrain if that's not a problem. I mean, it's it, Drupal they use now, and, and they want to continue, I believe, with that. But yeah, going to WordPress or some other. Um, I don't, yeah, because you know, I mean, we use WordPress, and there was no. There was a five if training. if that if if I guess are they open minded if you know that aspect is is the training or you know that's another uh, change. I know the reason they first changed over was because it was to try to um, lighten the load for Rick and Brent because now each department can get into their own area and update and there's timed out for you know timely documents on there can you know sort of automatically come off and there's some different things. But I would well imagine that those capabilities aren't. You can do that sort of. You can do that. I was going to say that, that's probably. So if maintaining and all that is, yeah, I mean, then then there's no reason why not to get a competitive bid, another. So, so I know with those costs embedded in it. So just so we know, if mm -hmm. there's a cost for training, we should know about it. Yeah, so I'm sure there is. <clears throat> Because the other piece of this is that if we have a more robust and user-friendly website that the EDC on a monthly basis can look at it, update it, make changes, and those things can be implemented rather easily. Whether it's pictures or videos or land or, or new regs, whatever it is, it has to be a dynamic site right. so that we can do that. And right now, we're not even close to that. So that's another thing is that if we went with option two, it's something that it's a dynamic site that we can always, he said, whatever you want to do, you can make changes. And we would like to have it so that Rick Bizzano or some, or the new person who's the IT person attends each of our meetings on a monthly basis and we can have a short discussion as to whether we want to update or change or add something and it could be done rather quickly. Yeah. And I just go back to this whole branding guidelines thing we talk about. I mean, the, and it's not training IT wise, but but part of what we talked about in the initial discussions of messaging and everything is to have everybody have this buy-in and understanding of what who we are as a town and how that speaks to economic development. And the communications person who's sending out all the messaging, who's going to be doing all this updating, is a key component to securing the brand, keeping the brand. Um, and and I use brand, but it is it's all the updates that are associated with that too. So okay. as I said, I I agree with Lou. Um, I think the branding is great, great the marketing, the look is fine but the, you got at, at the end of the day EDC is economic development and the people that are looking at the website we want to make sure it has as much fu much functionality as it can for them to get the information they want and, and actually those two things really aren't separate I mean I you can probably speak to this as well and I mean in other words you're creating your messaging and, and everything <coughs> you're sort of creating like what you're trying to have people buy into is is as much about the content you provide as it is the words you use to tell the story. So, it, it, you know, it, it's I hear what you're saying, and, and maybe I'm I'm more using the marketing lingo side of it, but it's about and, and I that you know journal thing is it's marketing, but the second second thing is process. So, I don't think any any of that is lost on any of us that it's it's the content part of it that's equally as important. Okay, so we can move on. Looking at time. Um, Carolyn, do you want to? Um, well, I was wondering, could I, would it be beneficial if I met with Rick and Hiram in that meeting? Yes. Or, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Because since I, I've been the techie go-between, you know, and the design yes. and technology. That would be fantastic. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so add me to the. <laughs> Mary, I think you've got to step up, and Mary's not here. She asked me to speak to that. Yeah, I got to uh, ten minutes. So. Yeah. Right. Let, uh, Hi, do you want to go first? Let's get to the important stuff. Why don't you give us a planning update, and then we'll go to. Uh, I, I have to leave in five minutes. I'm sorry. I've got interviews for in ten minutes. So I've got yeah. to leave. But um, for example, the projects that are under consideration right now, um, especially at the north end, just start with the north end. Specialty housing at Dorset Crossing had their groundbreaking ceremony, and if you haven't seen that project, you should stop right there and take a look at that. 48 units of special needs housing. We've talked about that. What are they going to solve for us or rent for? Don't know. You know, that'll depend on the person's income, Dave. So they'll be very. Oh, that, that's the MS guys? That's right. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the East Point housing uh, development has also started that, that as well at the same place. That was a, a total of 168 units. It'll be built out over two or three years. It's not going to be built all at once. That's underway as well. Had a meeting yesterday with. Uh, those the, are the low, low price ones. No, they're not going to be low price necessarily. They're market rate. Like what? 
I, I don't know the number. I mean, that's up to the developer, whatever they charge. is Well, 1200 uh, I have no clue. You know, they can charge whatever the market will, I understand. will bear. The East Point uh, people, that, that's seven units, 168. Um, seven buildings, 168 units. We had a meeting with Big Y this week. The, it's under. It's scheduled to start their land clearing in August, or uh, they're hopeful to finish the closing uh, this month and start the land clearing in August. It's not going to be open this year, obviously, but it is underway. So things have been resolved with regard so to. So the closing is going to be in August. That's what they told us yesterday. Yes. Center town center projects. Um, Simscroft property is uh, there's an inland wetlands application for delineation of where the floodplain wetlands line is going on. That's a precursor to them coming in with an actual application for that property. That's been a long, difficult process that we've uh, worked through, and they submitted that application a week or so ago, so that's underway as well. Still working with the Webster Bank folks with regard to housing at the old Webster Bank building. Um, that's uh, 12 or 15 units. It may be, end up being more units depending upon how that pixels <coughs> out as well. One of the other things that I want to bring, bring your attention to is that there are significant parking issues with regard to the business owners in the downtown area in terms of people putting up you know, no parking in this area, patrons only in this area. And the way those things were originally approved was you know, it was pool parking. And so the only way those projects got approved was that they're pool parking areas. It's important for all the business owners to realize that. We'll be contacting them and probably setting up some meeting in September to talk about how that needs to how that needs to work. And I, how I, I have a very uh, deep question on that. Um, being one of those business owners, I, I don't understand. I, I've heard it for years and years and years. I have. I completely do not understand the concept of pooled parking in the way it's being implemented, or, or some people believe it should be implemented in this town. I, I can't believe that a landowner A can have their patrons park on landowner B's lot. Why not? Because it's not their property. Okay. They're, they're, they have no right to it. Yeah. Well, they're here, they're here. It's the reason that there's a right is those projects. Which projects? See, I think I think we have to be very specific. It's not a it's not a town wide. If you have a parking lot, anyone can park in it at any time. So That's town, not the case. Town center project in a center, Simsbury Center Zone. Well, I'm in the Simsbury Center Zone, and I have no project, and I've never been related to any project that would allow any parking yeah. on, on my lot, here's and the, it's a liability to me. Well, here's the trade-off, Lou, is that if you propose a project that doesn't have adequate parking on your lot, and you expect to get approved, and you don't have adequate parking, the way those projects in the past were approved is that they were part of the whole center zone pool parking concept. When those projects were approved, it was specifically noted that they didn't have adequate parking and they were part of that pool parking. That's facility. the particular project's problem. Unless they came to well, it, landowner B and developed a parking arrangement, which should have been done at that time in writing and then approved by the town, mm -hmm. I would agree with you. But just to say, We'll approve your project, and you can park in any of these people's over here. Is is it's just not legal? It's not right. There were discussions about that, and I, and I can go back through each of the. We're, we're going to have a, a big, broad discussion about it. And I, I agree with you entirely that it's a very important process that we need to get a good handle on. But it's, it's going to become uh, an issue in the in the near future. So I would think it probably in September, we're going to end up having the discussion. With all the business owners from the zoning commission, you're certainly welcome to weigh in and come in on that as well. It's an important process. Well, I think so, I think it better be very highly promoted oh, yeah, and, because what you just said, uh, if there's a particular project that was approved and it had certain parking rights in a certain area, I would agree wholeheartedly with you. Yep. Yep. But to say, if you're in the center zone, you can park. If you're if you have some event, you can park anywhere you want because it's pooled parking is just not correct okay, that's it, that's it, wrong okay if someone comes in with a project and, and that's part of the process and part of the discussion part of the decision and they all know that going forward that owner knows that but then he sells the building and said well oh, new person puts up sign and says oh nobody else can park here this is just for me because i own it well that's why there has to be a parking agreement in writing you, it can't just be uh, in uh, some verbal thing that if you own a land in town and someone over here has a project they can park in your lot yeah there has to be a shared parking agreement it's part of their it's part of their zoning approval 
That's that's how they uh, were for the that. project. That's right. Right. So I can say I can tell you now. There's nothing on the land records on my property for anyone to park there. That's correct. so I have no pooled parking. That's correct. That that's that's what I'm trying to that's distinguish. Correct. But but if okay. you were, if you were to come in and you needed that that if someone needed it and did an arrangement with me mm -hmm. and we put it down, it would be on the land record. So if so, I sold my property, that runs with the land. That agreement would run with the land. Right. So I would agree with that. Yeah. Okay. But I, think, but I don't it, think we're yeah. that far away, but okay. we understand yeah. that. We I understand think there has to be some, some documentation so everyone knows wh who's sharing with whom. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The South End, a uh, couple things. Hartford Foreign Base Code was uh, adopted on Monday evening. Um, the marketing for that property can begin in earnest. They've already started to talk to people. People are starting to call and ask about the new code and what they could do under the code. So that's going to be an imp important uh, process going forward. There, uh, as you know, there have been informal discussions with regard to the Northeast Utilities property and three different components of that property, the south, the central, where the, the Northeast Utilities building is, and then the northern piece, which has a commercial component to it, uh, is under, it was informally discussed with the Zoning Commission recently. When they come back with their formal proposal, they'll be back and in, in to talk to you about what their, propose, their actual proposal for that site is as well. Uh, I will go back to the, go back to the Hartford issue. Yep. Uh, say again what your, where they are? The Hartford Code has been adopted. Okay. Okay. So people are starting to call now. Like like people calling the town, calling the Hartford? Well, people call here, and I refer them to the oh, the, the realtor, are there any, CBRE. Are there, are there any live fish calling on this? Thing? Yeah, there are, there are several, <laughs> several people that have called that are interested in putting together down. proposals for the property. How's the time frame on when they're going to vacate the building? We think we have about, and we, we think we have about a year uh, before they'll be out of the building. So 2015 sometime is what we're thinking. Okay, so we have about a year to get that together. And as I said, people are starting to call already on that. Um, just so you know, too, on Monday night, there was also a public hearing that was opened. It was not closed yet. It had to do with uh, pool barn property on the south end. Uh, pool barn property is, um, that barn itself is proposed to be completely rehabilitated into a retail and also possibly a business and residential facility. Uh, owner stated at that meeting that it probably cost them about a million dollars to renovate that building, so that's significant. Uh, we're interested in what the, whether the EDC thinks uh, that's a, a good project or not. Along with that on the same property is also a Cumberland Farms convenience store and gas station. That particular facility will cost about $2 million. Are they tied together? They are. So about the only way that the renovation of the pool barn works is if it has some money to... to Right. obviously generate that income. So $3 million on about 1.87 acres is what that proposal is for. EDC ought to weigh in on that. Public hearing has continued till July 21st in front of the Zoning Commission. If you have any uh, thoughts on that, please let me know. One thing that's really important is I'd like to let the Commission know that um, we're applying for a Vibrant Communities Initiative Grant from the Connecticut Trust for Historic Preservation. That's actually due Tuesday. I've got to spend tomorrow and this weekend writing that. Um, I would like to get a letter of support from the EDC for that. What we intend to apply for is uh, a grant that will allow us to continue and finish the form-based coding for the WETOG area. That's the section between Powder Forest Drive and 185. We've done a lot of preliminary work, and there were three or four public meetings to talk about that. And what we're in the process of doing now is applying for this grant to finish up the actual coding, uh, get the team in to do the coding, draft the code for that, that particular area. How, how much is the grant for? $50,000. It's no match. So if we get it, uh, that'll finish up the code uh, pretty quickly. So we're anxious to do that. We need letters of support from Main Street. We need to ask them about that. I'd like to get one from EDC like to get a letter of support from the chamber and also from the other local businesses. I know the Mitchells have been very actively um, interested in pursuing this and making this uh, move along at a, at a rapid rate, so we're interested in getting letters of support from them. Stakeholders will be involved in that whole process. That's very important as well. You also may remember we did the Route 10 corridor study a little while ago, and one of the really nifty things that came out of that study was the creation of a Weetog Village Green. And that, that part, we, we had a meeting actually with DOT this week as well. And DOT is very interested in that whole process as well. So there are a lot of really interesting links here that could kind of come together. That's a very expensive project. And DOT said, well, we don't have the money. We talked to Krog afterwards and said, we'll find the money to do it. So very interesting things can come out of this whole thing. And this, this VCI grant will be sort of the start of that whole, whole formalization process. So if you could supply a letter of support for that uh, Vibrant Communities Initiative grant. Um, that would be great. Appreciate okay. that. So. 
Back, back on uh, Simscroft Echoes, uh, and I guess the, the question is where's the floodplain? Where was it? Where is it now? Has the land been augmented by right. stuff he's brought? All that kind of stuff, right? Yep. Uh, that's, that's, how's that going to be determined? Who decides that? The, uh, the engineers actually go out and measure where the floodplain line is, and where then soil scientists measure where the line is. The surveyor surveys it. They bring in a map to the Wetlands Commission, and everybody agrees, hopefully, ultimately, where that line is. So this is this is in the Wetlands Commission right now, eh? That's okay. right. Yeah. This has been a long process. These are all long projects. And I find you know, some blasting caps in there too, because when the great flood came through. A lot of the stuff from the magazines mm -hmm. flooded down into that floodplain line. Yeah. <laughs> There's been a lot of excavation that took place on the property to determine whether the soils are clean or not, uh, what's, what types of soils are there, whether they're <coughs> plain soils or whether they're natural soils. So There's been a lot of work on that property in the last six to nine years. <coughs> so working hard on that right now. <coughs> so we expect probably something. I just had a comment. I was at the public hearing. Um, I actually spoke for the, um, the Hartford. Um, there was a um, resident that got up and spoke and I just wanted to mention I she said she quoted from the Economic Development Commission a statement that said we have enough things in the queue that we don't need the tax revenue from the Hartford that that was a, on the EDC from the EDC meeting I, I probably should have spoken to it I, I didn't recall that statement coming out of here um, what did she say we said that we have enough projects in the queue that we don't need the Hartford <laughs> She didn't didn't read the minutes, obviously. <laughs> so, and I understand it's like the telephone game and messages are out there, but as Hiram said, the room was full. There was only three of us that spoke to the Harvard. Everybody else was there for the gas station, but they all heard that statement. And um, I don't know if you guys gave a letter of support that's on the record for the Hartford. I didn't ask about that, whether the EDC. So, I, you know, you're not on the record in the minutes having supported it, and then the statement was made by the resident. It just, it was like mm. kind of a moment, and... Uh, this is supporting the farm-based code, or, or what? For the Hartford. For the Hartford. Rezoning the Hartford property. That yeah. property, farm-based code for that property. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I mean, don't there, think we ever did well. There were it. even some folks at the, at, the, at the zoning meeting talking about that, that that had no recollection of, of why we did this whole process, or how we got into it, or who asked for this, or whatever. So. I'm, I'm not sure um, s sort of how to respond to some of that. We've been working really hard for a year to try to get her to get this thing on track and make sure that new developers are inter interested in it. And I can tell you that there are a number of developers that have called, and then as I said, I refer them to CBRE, and they're very anxious to pursue those marketing efforts. So, well, we, we know I did vote on that, did we? Did I thought we did for, did I, I don't recall when, it was probably April, May. I can't remember. Maybe we did. I can't remember. I thought. I'm not positive, but I just yeah, I I thought. Well, it should be in the minutes, eh? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, I've seen the Poolbone and Cumberland Farms presentation twice, and I think, given the economics of Hiram, it's definitely an EDC issue, and in the Wetlands, it's, it's been passed, and I think it's a strong thing to help. It fits in with the plan of development, and I think you guys should. Supporter. I'm going to speak we never, publicly. We, the, no one's ever made a presentation to us in I terms of yeah, what they want to do. Lie, I, but uh, I'm going to speak at the public hearing because I think it's, uh, I wasn't there on the Planning Commission. Uh, could you, could you get me the for. information of the, the developer and contact information to see if they yeah, would like to? Well, well, no, but it's, it's going to be the public hearings before our next meeting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the public, it's uh, two weeks. I, so I think, I think we should take a position on that. Is we, I don't know anything about no, it. No, no, I understand. Yeah, yeah. But maybe we need a special meeting before the hearing opens again. It's definitely a tax. I mean, I think it's a strong yeah. property. I mean, the NIMBYs are there, but forget that. It's yeah. going to make that site beautiful, preserve the pool bar. I, I was at one of the presentations for the Zoning Commission when the folks uh, went. But the interesting thing to me, actually, is that Vita Root, that's in Simsbury, you talk about a whole economic development. They make the devices yeah. that are the valves that are involved with this, um, the products, uh, you know, for gas stations. Gas station, so yes. that, that was just so cool. But they really talked about the the multiple levels of safety within um, the you bike know, path the that ties in. They're doing rest, public restroom for the people on the bike path, a shelter, bike racks. It's a very Simsbury project. Well, why was it never brought? Well, yeah, Hiram was gone. Why was, was it never brought a, before us? Under new business, I was going to make a comment on. Some well, of that. they never they never brought the marijuana plant before us either. 
You know, I, you, I don't are understand. Are you guys signed up for news announcements? You get agendas and you know the projects that are going on. So I'm just throwing that out there. There's plenty of times that that, that, that is all there. If it doesn't come before you, hey that, Nancy. I, I, listen, I don't not disagree. Not true. Because I don't disagree. With okay. the presentations. In the in the interest of time. Could we go to um, step up program? Yeah. Just a yeah. Up. What is it? Just a quick update on that. This is a program that is sponsored by um, the Connecticut State Department of Labor. They've been doing it throughout the state, multiple programs. This program was also in Simsbury. It was sponsored by um, Rep. Hampton and um, Senator Wickes. And what it did is it brought together. I think Sarah touched very well on it. Um, Mary and I attended, and it was a tremendous presentation. It, it's all the state. People you would need if you're thinking of hiring a veteran, here are the veteran contact so that you can find out what benefits your company can get by hiring a veteran. If you're interested in funding through the state, here is your contact for this. And that what they did is they provided every department head was there and could speak to the programs that they offered. And they provided every participant with a um, packet on direct contacts so you don't have to go through the... This is the stuff that will be on our website it eventually. It will be on the website. We have that. But it was a tremendous program, um, and it really a benefit. It was bipartisan. It's not meant to be partisan or political. It was sponsored by two parties and the Connecticut Department of State. It's throughout the state. If you missed one, look up on their website if you want to attend what is very worthwhile. A couple of quick uh, additions to that. I just wanted to mention, thanks to Sarah, the state um, Simsbury is in a contest. Currently with the State Tourism Office, we are in eighth to try and get um, the most tourist friendly, or what is, <coughs> what's your fav fan favorite? Your fan favorite. They're fan voting favorite. for their fan favorite throughout the state of Connecticut. It's run by the office, the State Office of Tourism, and they give a package to the winners. And right. which will help support and brand your town. And we are currently in eighth. I want to thank the First Selectman's Office and our new communications director and the intern over there who put together a wonderful video that is on the tourist um, Facebook uh, website that highlights Simsbury. They also put together a fantastic um, flyer which basically says, um, vote for Simsbury is your fan favorite town. It's th distributed throughout the town. It says soar or plunge picture of Hugh Line and the river because of the uh, ideas to promote the still revolutionary and what makes Sims very great. So we are under a huge effort to try and get as many people to vote. You can vote more than once. So go to the tourism website and uh, their Overly Facebook page. Off, as Mary said. Yes. <laughs> once a day. Once um, a day. And then finally, Simsbury was ranked number one as bike friendly um, in the survey of Connecticut towns. And why that is an economic issue is because that's what brings people to town. We learned from the marketing study that if you promote lifestyle, as this task force is saying, you bring people to town. That is economic development. We're very proud of that initiative. We've been a leader and we're helping other towns. On that question, has the town allocated any money uh, at all for signage on the bike trail that goes through Simsbury? They are looking into that right now. The bike friendly, there's a bike friendly group, uh, bike pedestrian group that meets, I think, the third Thursday every month in the library. They're <coughs> addressing that with Tom Roy. It's, it is. It's, because yeah. it's also part of the East Coast Greenway, so uh, Bruce Donald, it, it's, a, it's been an ongoing conversation. They're just trying to figure out they want some consistency with the signs throughout the town. Right. And is that tied into the merchants? Yes, it will there, be. there are wayfaring. It will show bathrooms, it will show uh, rest stops, okay. things like that. Good. They're just trying to figure out to make sure it's not completely cluttered. And one of the one of the interesting things that we had a conversation with at our innovations meeting with um, Westminster is they are looking to uh, start independent study and create an app. And Mary brought up one of the things that we need in economic development is a bike trail app that directs people to the bike trails, where are the businesses off the bike trails, if you want to get something That'll be to on eat. our website, too. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, but I think that... Re you know, like, we have it, the meeting, we say add that, it gets added that way. <coughs> Real simple. Right, and it'll be on the website. I mean, it will be in multiple locations, but the idea is that we're trying to promote the town and highlight the things that the uh, marketing studies suggested we highlight. And Recreation, those are the things that we're doing. entertainment and arts. Yeah, so. and so that is that is absolutely economic development, and we're very proud of the initiatives and the help, and we've, we're have we seeing great things happen. If you haven't had a chance to look at the video, look at the video. If you haven't seen the flyers, take a look at the flyers. Um, there's a lot of great, as Sarah says, the great things happen great here. Great things happen here. <laughs> what, what about the uh, future uh, plans? Fergus mentioned for years trying to tie in the 
bike path east west into other areas of the uh, town is there any plan for that we're looking at trail management <coughs> tom roy is looking at trail management and to help prioritize <coughs> what we should do in the future we are looking for funding for that and yeah. they just finished um they just finished uh the bike committee um it's both bike and pedestrian they just finished the school loop yeah so they are they are they're doing exactly what you're talking about and what the charrette also called for which is tying in the east-west connections to make sure right. that the neighborhoods are safer for kids to Safety. bike to school yes. Absolutely, they just completed a major, major intersection, and, and I believe the town is, is, you know, they're taking them one by they're one. They're beginning to inventory, prioritize, and figure out how, we, what connections are still needed. So that is right. in the process. The absolutely, the school is, is doing exactly what you want. But I, I, you know, it is an important economic development. And I, I know you guys. I haven't seen members of this committee at the bike friendly meetings. They, I think it's worthwhile going because what they're doing is really economic development. No, they get there's some. I mean, I've passed out some stuff uh, before when we had the bike people come in, right. but they've made the case across the country that those communities that invest in bike uh, <coughs> trails and the like, it brings in a lot of people. It does. And I think it would be great if you guys want to send a representative as EDC, because it is directly related, and they are doing a tremendous amount of work. So mm -hmm. it would be nice to have your support if that's something you guys are interested in. Um, and I think those are the major highlights in the town right now. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, June 30th was the end of fiscal year. Was there any money found for other projects that you were mentioning before? I'm particularly thinking about the Martin Luther King project. They, as far as I know, we have not seen a submission from them, a formal request. We had asked for information. I haven't seen that yeah, yet. That's what the first selectman had mentioned. Yeah. It came up in discussion at our, at our, oh, when we were talking about transfers and stuff at, at our, one of our last meetings that, um, and, and yet I, recall that we had back in January a letter from TJ Donahue yeah, and I yeah. don't know I know the first selectman had asked for, adi for additional information that had not been received yet I don't know we haven't seen the agenda for the next meeting it may be on yeah. it but yeah. th that June 30th was a magic date that would no to be. no there are going to be some transfers coming up okay we've done one round of transfers and I think we'll have two more rounds from what I understand um, a lot of that though from as far as I understand has been outlined like you know salt and and other things so we haven't as far as i know we haven't had any discussion around there's not much room for discretion uh, well there's never much room for discretion but that doesn't mean we don't evaluate projects as they come in absolutely and there's also an opportunity one thing we do routinely especially with projects like the mlk or the veterans thing is we offer in kind services the town may not have money but we do have equipment and we're willing to share it and help and Manpower. Uh, manpower. We have certain things that, like even with the performing arts, <coughs> sometimes we have manpower the town can offer, which offsets costs, which is the same thing as an in-kind donation. So there are many options um, out there, and you know we're open to hearing from anyone. But no not, formal proposal. I have not seen understand. one. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. As of yet. Can we go back to this pool bond thing? I, I think the EDC. I don't know how we're going to. First of all, we have to be able to gather who we're talking to so they can come and... I, I understand, but I'm talking the timing of it, okay? Because I think we should be on record, pro or con, on the issue. I, I've listened to a lot of this stuff on, on uh, C-SPAN or whatever it is on the... On the C-SPAN, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We just upgraded it. So I know, I know a lot about it, but the rest of the commission, and I, I, I don't know, can, can we vote by... by uh, Facts or by Twix or by I, how, how, how do we have to do it formally as a you meeting? A meeting. You, have you have to have a meeting. It would be it would be a special meeting. But I'll I have to tell my note yeah, to understand. contact Hiram to find out who the contact is and okay. what their okay. time. Chris is. Smith is the attorney with Shipper and Goodwin and Heskiff and all these. I mean they they dot, they dot the eyes and cross the T's and I bet they'd come in here because I think it's and the bike people. I'm going to call the bike people too and have them there because it's a, it's an important thing for Sims to raise tax money. The um, I just have a more general question that involves the pool barn and it, I wasn't at the meeting last month but Griffin Land and. There's a lot of things on the agenda, but to me, some of the most important things we're not really hitting upon at our meetings, and, and that is, you know, Griffin Land came in and said um, they have nine acres that they're going to be putting up for sale. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's where we should be sure. focusing efforts, uh, this pool barn. Well, uh, we, feed you. Every time everyone comes to him, they should, should be, be coming here. Guys. 
but we, we need to promote that because <coughs> all, all we are is a voice in Correct. the town for economic development. And um, well, the Hartford, the Hartford form-based code, and, and whether you're for or against, we, can, we, we might say this is not good, but we should be taking positions in most of our meetings. And if we have, we talked about this, if we have to have special meetings or two meetings, most of our meetings, I think, should be talking about things like the Hartford and the form-based code. Uh, maybe this pool barn one, have them come in and, and debate whether that's good or bad for the town. And, and then when Griffin Land comes in and they talk about uh, what type of things we might be appropriate for up by the airport, that conversation in general, I think, is an important one as to what we think that should look like somewhere down the road and how we can assist them in promoting those lands. I think that's what we should be doing um, in spending the majority of time. Uh, so look, as I said, the, the agenda is always open. If somebody wants to add something to the agenda, they're, but, but, I'd be more than happy to put it on. But, but somehow, I think you've got to, to talk to Hiram. As and these get things info. come through, I, yeah. uh, Hiram gets to be like the focal point, I guess. And things don't get presented to us in a timely fashion, like right. the pool barn, like the marijuana factory. Right. You know, all this stuff, you know, they say, well, if you follow it in the paper, well, no one buys the current anymore, you know? So, I mean, the, we've got to have a system set up to do this. It's really communicating with Hiram, I think, that is Well, I think, the, I think the administration has a responsibility, whether it be Hiram or somebody else, to get that information in a nodly fashion to the EDC. Otherwise, get rid of the EDC, right. you know? I mean, this is ridiculous what goes on around here. Just one quick reminder, you might also want to look at having uh, liaisons that would attend the boards because um, from the developer's perspective, every time they have to do a presentation and bring in their attorneys and their architects, they do pay for that. And so I think what we also want to make sure is that we're not putting extra burden or cumber, you know, so they're, they're doing presentations and there should be ways to get that information that you, that you need. But for our purposes, they We've don't need... We've had combined yeah. between zoning and planning and you guys too. So Hiram could set up a meeting. So you're exactly right. Yeah, but so I'm just saying, suits, just, we all we all here on the show that you don't need the the attorneys to come in here for us. And we're championing if if their presentation is appropriate, we're going to champion their cause. So they yeah. they would want to. Most of the times, the 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 developers or people running certain projects. They would like to come sure. here uh, because this saying, helps them go to those yeah. other I'm meetings. Maybe yeah. if, there's, if they're having joint meetings, it would be great to see the EDC yeah. represented there, sure. so it's not a duplication. But I think that understanding yeah. that you guys are still an important. But commission. we don't we don't know right now. There's a little disconnect between a particular project in the EDC at the early stages. Like right now, I'm hearing uh, something down on the south uh, parcel, and they're hearing about. Uh, uh, Gerard's property. Uh, you, you hear these two things, but we should be involved in some degree when they become somewhat public. That we are probably their first stop, and I think that kind of we used to be kind of the first stop before <laughs> they went to zoning and planning, so that they we could help them we along have, the way. I was just going to say that the website discussion that the programs group had, they asked specifically, well, is there an order to the process and should we put the land use boards in order so people know, you know, okay, I'm going to, you know, WPCA, I'm going to Inland Wetlands, I'm, I'm going here. And we, we actually put Economic Development Commission in that cluster with those groups and that which then filters down and leads into zoning. So, I mean, that's just the very point of it. Yeah, so we, it used to be at the beginning. Yeah, so that we, we could escort them through and help and speak and present provide letters along the way and actually go to meetings and job and I say job shadow but shadow a project as an economic Correct. development commission member that you kind of are their ambassador well, through. I'll ask Hiram to which he does now under the planning director update is to bring to, uh, at our meetings is to give us a heads up on the various things that are popping up or about to pop up so that we have a better Understanding what's going on. Okay, in the interest of time, old business, new business. Do you want to put something? That, that was that was my. Okay, um, uh, we have in years past either voted to have our regular August meeting. Um, other times we have not because of vacation. As of right now, is everybody that's currently here available for August? Our August meeting, which no. is going to be. I'm usually. What was the date? Checking. The date is going to be August 14th. I will not. Okay, I'll send uh, out an Tedeschi email to people. Trucks that night. Pardon? Tedeschi Trucks. 
Oh. I need a concert. Big concert. <coughs> the what? Tedeschi Trucks. Big concert. I will send an email to the commissioners to see if it's we're going to have really a quorum concert. for the August 14th meeting. Okay. And are you going to do anything uh, for uh, the pool barn? Well, I have to find out. Get the contact in information. Fact, can, can call them and see if they'll come in, or if you have. A well, we'd have to have it because you, if we. Yeah, you have to. Have a, you have to set it up pretty quickly. Because it would have to be a special meeting prior to the 14th. The question is, how many of e EDC commissioners are going to be around? Yeah. Because I don't want them coming in and we have four people here. That's a waste of our time. We, if, we, if we can't get at least seven or eight of our commissioners here, then I don't want to take their time. You could do it with six. Well, six was excuse the time. pun. You should pool the board. You, <laughs> you got to find out when it, it is and then give us an opportunity for um, We need tax and money. Pick out some times. Okay. Uh, without that, um, any other issues? Old business, new business? Okay. We have a motion for adjournment. Second. Second. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Lisa. Good to see you for one second. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. What were your questions on the innovation? I'm so sorry. I'm just trying to. <coughs> no, I mean, I think.